Hello, my name's Simon Crafer. We're in Mizano, in the paddock, in the Extern Pro truck, because they are the builders and suppliers of the Moto2 engines, and that's what this week's talk, Tech Talk is about, the Triumph 765 Moto2 engine. So, at the beginning of the year, Extern Pro gets sent 120 engine kits, plus another 12, which we'll bring up in a moment, to build and dyno. And they don't get complete engines because it's consistency, having the same people build them every time. So they've got three guys going full-time building engines. They've got one guy going full-time, eight hours a day, on the dyno and one guy supplying them, you know, keeping them supplied and things. And then they've got Trevor and Alfonso at the circuit, uh, working with the teams, you know, supplying them engines and uh, controlling everything, which we'll come back to. The rules uh, in the class is that the engines for all 30 can't be more than 3% difference, you know, from the most powerful to the least powerful. Extern Pro, in that 120 engines, see around a 1.5% difference. And then by listing them all from the most powerful to the least powerful, they can break them down into the groups of 30 and get that percentage within 1%, you know? So pretty damn close. And so then they take that 30 to the circuit and an Urta um, representative holds a black bag uh, with uh, the numbers for the engines in it and a team representative dunks in and like a lottery pulls that uh, engine number and then they're given that engine and then uh, everyone has their 30 engines with the Magneti Morelli um, system on there they're fed back all the data from every lap, every corner of every lap of every session. Each session, the Extern Pro guys can have a look at that data and see, for example, punch in temperature of all 30 bikes, and they'll see the ones that are extra high. They can go and speak to those teams and go, what happened there? Maybe they'd forgotten the tape on the radiator from the morning session or maybe the radio is not working, they can keep an eye on anyway, on temperatures. Then also how the riders are using it. They can punch in RPMs and obviously on the throttle, the thing is limiting at 14,000 RPM and they can't go over that. But the standard road bike is uh, 12.6, something like that. These rev to 14. But on the downshift, some riders have less mechanical sympathy than others, and they're going bum bum and banging down those gears so quick that it's going past the 14,000 RPM to 14. Trev will ex Trevor and the Xterm Pro guys will not look until 14.6, and when they go over 14.6, then they're getting into you know abuse of the engine. And 14.8, 14, 14.9, 14, 15,000 RPM they see on the downshift, they'll go and warn the rider and the team and say. You're using, you know, look, this corner here, you're using this many times you did this RPM. Please stop doing that. They'll warn them up to four times verbally before they decide that engine has done too much. They've been too mean to it. We're going to pull it out because we can't risk anything. Rebuild it, and they pay for the rebuild. So uh, you obviously don't want that. But something interesting, you know that 12, 14 extra engines that I mentioned? They've got of various different mileage there, and they supply like for like. So if you've done 800 kilometers on your engine, you've abused it, they'll give you one as close to 800 kilometers as possible, so you have no advantage or disadvantage over the rest of the field. Then when the three races is up, you know, that everyone gets a new engine, you get a new engine, or well, that rider does at the same time, you know, so you're back in the rhythm. Um, everything's fair. So what else? The engines are sealed. So when the teams take the, rider, uh, the engines home or transport between races, they can't open them because they've got non-tamper things everywhere. You can't take cases off. 
you can't take, some soft you can't take, rocker covers off, everything's sealed with a non-temp uh, lid, both sides of the engine. Also, um, the gear lever linkage is taken off. This is placed over it, and it's bolted on and sealed, as well, lock-wired and sealed. Because then, if the bike's in neutral, which they put it in neutral before they do this, it can't be started, because it's got no starter motor, it has to be bump-started, and it can't be ridden. So the they're not getting any sneaky mileage testing somewhere else. And they can't be tampered with, uh, you know, and pulled apart. Everything in those engines is original OEM Triumph parts. Like if you've got a 765 ro uh, road bike, it's the same. Uh, except the clutch cover is modified to um, have basically, like dirt bikes, quick release so you can change plates quicker without having to take the big cover off. The clutch itself isn't Triumph, it's FCC, slipper clutch. Uh, and plates and the gearbox ratios are slightly different but they're still picked from OEM Triumph parts just different ratios from different models so what is next then I should speak about the the rebuilds what um, they do so they do three races and then it's a bigger rebuild than I thought it's the exact same system that they used with the 600 the previous engines in this class and uh, the same people, Extern Pro, looking after them. So they're doing the same system, which is three races on the engine. Everyone gives their engines back and goes back into the system for a rebuild. And that rebuild is piston rings, conrods, shells, you know, the big end shells, uh, crankshaft, gearbox. And I imagine something with the valves, but they're saying that the titanium valves and beryllium seats are so good and hard, you know, hard material they're not wearing. They just need cleaning in order to get those deposits of carbon off, you know, from the burnt fuel, because that's what ruins the seal. If it, you know, the seal of the valves is so basically once they're all clean again, they're they're 100%. So they go back for another three races. So then there are six races. Then it gets the big rebuild, which is crankcases included and all that, cylinder head valves. The only thing they don't change out of the whole engine is a uh, generator and some covers, right? A couple of covers, you know, these covers. Everything else is brand new. Then does another three races and gets the slightly lighter rebuild, which is cleaned up cylinder head and valves, new piston, rods, shells, crank, gearbox. And uh, back, and then after that one, it's so it's done 12 races. It gets thrown away, brand new one, and start again. So what's next uh, is I would have to say I've got to look at my list here. Power and torque. That's right. So 600s, um, like I said, Xturn Pro looked after them as well, dynoed them as well. The 600 obviously had less power because it's less capacity, but the big difference is the torque. They're saying the 600 uh, torque curve has a few peaks and troughs. And uh, you feel that when you ride a 600, you feel the Triumph is really linear. So really flat power torque curve, sorry, torque curve. And the 600 one, at the best, the closest, it's still 18 to 20% less. But at the, the, the troughs, it's almost 50%, almost double. So 40 something percent difference uh, meaning more in the Triumph in those troughs, the 600. And I've got to mention the next thing, I've got to look at my list, is yeah, the, the reason that the, this is being more successful with the bigger engine is that it's closer, at least it's a step closer to MotoGP. So the riders are learning with that more torque, having to control the rear tyre grip with their hands, you know, and also Extern Pro building the 600s and the 765s is they've noticed less issues and less wear than on the 600s. So to me, it sounds like a real triumph. See you in Austin for the next Tech Talk. I hope you've enjoyed.